Todd Sachs of Sachs Realty, and I'm sitting here with Jerry Lotz of Cost Seg Energy Solutions, and we're going to talk about things that you should know as it pertains to depreciation uh, of commercial buildings and uh, multifamily housing, just investment properties in general. So uh, you're going to like this podcast. All right, so Jerry, introduce yourself and what you do. Good morning, Todd, Melissa, Kenny. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, so I'm Jerry Lotz. Uh, Cost Seg Energy Solutions is, is my company, but 98% of what I do is represent this amazing engineering-based company in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, called Cost Segregation Services Incorporated. So they've been around about 16 years or so and helped owners of more than 20,000 properties across the country to save on their federal income taxes. Uh, we actually, we're, we're not accountants, uh, so we work very closely with tax professionals and their clients that have residential rental properties, multifamily properties, and commercial properties. A typical straight line depreciation, for example, on a, um, a commercial building is a 39-year time cycle. So that client and tax professional, if it's a $390,000 building, 39-year depreciable life cycle, they're taking $10,000 a year as an expense for 39 years. But the IRS tax code says if you can identify and put a value on certain components inside that building, maybe it's decorative molding, maybe it's carpets, maybe it's cabinetry, countertops, they can be reclassified and put into a five or seven year depreciation life cycle. And things like landscaping, uh, parking lots, paving, sidewalks, they can be reclassified and put into a 15 year depreciable life cycle. So out of that $390,000 property, we may come along through our engineering based forensic study on that building and find $90,000 worth of assets that can be carved out, put into a category that can be depreciated more quickly. So just like us, when we do our income taxes at the end of the year, the more deductions we can find, the more it offsets the income we make, the less taxes we pay. For building owners, it's the same way. The more deductions we find, so we find and identify those assets that can be deducted more quickly. Typical, you know, if we find $90,000 worth of that $390,000 building that can be accelerated and deducted more quickly, that potentially could result in a tax savings of $30,000, $35,000 for the owner. Mm -hmm. Sure. So how does that work with... Um so I'm a property owner. Sure. I have uh, investment properties. I have both commercial and residential. And I know that we are uh, taking the depreciation. So how does it work? You mentioned like uh, items like carpeting. Sure. Um, where I think, and I'm not an accountant either, we employ one, uh, but I think that um, when we replace carpeting and things like that, when it needs it, that falls under almost something that is instantly written off call it like a repair or maintenance. Right, okay. Where I take that whole thing right away. Sure. So does that um, negate the ability to then, if you're depreciating that carpet, let's say, over, as one of those accelerated items that you're doing over seven or 15 years, whatever, whatever you had said, does that then replace the ability to replace that in three years because it's damaged? or something like that. How does that work? No, it doesn't really negate that ability to replace it sooner than you have to replace it. Um, the idea behind that, and, and the tax code in 2014 had changed very favorably for business owners, and the Tax Cut and Job Act 2017-18 had made some changes that were very favorable for business owners. Um, the code of 2014 really helped accelerate some of those deductions in the classification. Like you mentioned, um, you've got carpeting and your tax professional may write that off more quickly than other things. So what we do is really come in and quantify, identify the assets that can be written off more quickly and put a value on those assets. So it, it gives the um, tax professional 
kind of peace of mind knowing that somebody else has put values on those items and how yeah. would they otherwise do it yeah right. exactly they would not be able to right, right right they don't have the engineering based background to be able to do those calculations mm -hmm. nor do Sometimes they want they the a reserve study or something like that yeah like a lot of these you know like a condominium association would have which sure comes in very similar process. yeah very similar yeah so so they don't have the engineering background and expertise really to do that and they don't oftentimes they don't want the liability that's associated with it mm -hmm. so um let's talk about that so what's the process and you know you talk about liability so when you hire someone like you to do this assessment um what are the liabilities good question and, and who is liable if it's not correct <laughs> good question good question so in fact, that's one of the the kind of misconceptions out there about what we do. There are a lot of misconceptions about what we do. But one of the um, thoughts that comes to people's minds, if I engage a company like ours to do a cost segregation study on a piece of property, um, what happens if there's a, an issue that comes up? Or some what people... What would the issue be? Well, audit? A, a potential audit, okay. yeah, but but say, wait a be, minute, why did you take this? Yeah, how did you break this out, and why? Sure, right. But but the fact that some a company or an individual engaged us to do work for them, in and of itself, would not trigger an audit. There's got to be another underlying reason somewhere in that background of tax returns that would have triggered the audit. Some of the clients that we've done work for have come under audit. And when that happens, the IRS just drags everything into it. Our work gets dragged into it. Mm -hmm. um, when we do work for a client, we will uh, defend the work that we've done on behalf of that client in front of the IRS. And that's happened a few times. CSSI, the, the company that I work for, has done probably 20,000 or so properties across the country in every state in their 16 years of being in existence. And, um, you know, some of our clients have, for different reasons, come under audit. But the IRS has never overturned any of the work that we've done. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no additional cost for us to do that. I mean, uh -huh. when, when we quote a project, uh, and we offer a, a free quote on any property, whether it's newly bought, newly built, even if the client's owned it for a number of years, we will give an estimate of tax savings. Can they break it out? So that's a good point. If if someone has had a property, let's say 10 years, sure, and they're already into you know, 10 years of their, of their depreciation, um, can you adjust it at that point? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's what we do. One of the things we do best is go back and what we call scrub a depreciation schedule. Look at a depreciation schedule, how the client and the tax professional have taken depreciation over the years. And with the, new, with the tax law change in 2014, there were some changes to the way clients should depreciate property. So, so we will scrub those depreciation schedules and come up with an estimate, oftentimes find things that may have been capitalized where they're, you know, they made an expenditure and they're, ex they're so depreciating. They it off right away or something like that. Well, if, if they expensed it right away, there okay. may be some things like that. Sometimes people will make investments and decide to depreciate it over the long term for whatever reason. Yeah, I know my accountant has done that with, with me. You know, he said, you know, you can't write this off. This right. is actually in a cap almost like a capital improvement. A capital improvement, exactly. It has to go into improvements. Right. And then that would then be depreciated, I guess, I guess off of that, um, you know, that ske that same schedule. Absolutely, absolutely. So you look at that, look at what's been spent over the last several years, or even the lifetime of the property. Sure, sure. What's been written off. Sure. And then establish what you can accelerate. Yeah, on. what we can change in that depreciation schedule and sure. accelerate. Yeah. Sure. And it really sets up a, when we come in and do the work, we're scrubbing a depreciation schedule. We're getting that client's tax return or, or, or property um, estimates in the most compliant method with the IRS tax code. Mm -hmm. We're correcting any errors that may possibly so you need be to look done. at it annually, depending on what people invest in the property or make improvements of. I mean, is that you almost need to do that? Um, not necessarily. Okay. Um, 
you mentioned somebody owns a property for three, four, five, ten years or whatever. Mm -hmm. We would come in and you know scrub that depreciation schedule, come back with an estimate, and then perform the work to reclassify those assets. Once that's done, uh, then our work, for the most part, is done. Um, if that client makes some major improvements in the next few years, we can come back and reclassify those major improvements as well, just to make sure that they are all correct and aligned with the tax code. Sure. Another. No, go ahead. Thought, th that's okay. Another um, maybe misconception that may be out there, people think, well, gosh, I've owned this property for four or five years. If all of a sudden I get a cost segregation study done, I've got to go back and amend tax returns. Mm -hmm. There's no need to do that. Just move uh, forward. Just move forward. We come up with what's called a, 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 a 481A adjustment, which is an adjustment of the increase in depreciation and there is a, a, a change of accounting method that needs to be done, and there's a laborious form that we end up doing for the tax professional as well. So the pro tax professional submits that change of accounting method and that 481A adjustment, and then they move forward. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Just a little side note, um, we help a lot of investors sure. buy real estate and sell real estate, sell their portfolios and things like that. Um, you know, it's amazing how many people that we meet that um, don't know that they're not getting good tax advice. They don't even know that you can depreciate the structure. <clears throat> right. And and, um, and then there are others that don't realize that when they sell it, the fact that they have been depreciating that, if they don't fully depreciate that structure, that comes back as an income liability. Sure. So when you take those, if you don't fully deduct that property, I mean, again, I'm not an accountant. I just know from speaking, am I saying the right thing here? Yeah. Yeah. You're on on track. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so let's kind of talk about that $390,000 building that you were talking about. Okay. So give the audience an idea of what those, what services would cost, your services would cost. Okay. To come in and do that analysis, um, bring in the engineer, you know, study. Sure. That you speak of. Sure. Okay. So, say somebody buys a three hundred ninety thousand dollar little medical office building, for example. We would um, do an estimate of tax savings. I can do it off of just a real estate listing. Our company matches it up with similar types of properties that we've done across the country and would come back with an estimate of how much we can save and that would give our cost. So we don't base our cost on a percentage of the savings. We have a flat fee for the work that we do. Once the client signs off on us doing the work, we would collect half of that money up front and then go to work and get all the you know, the, the architectural drawings of that property that were done, any um, appraisals that were done, then somebody would physically go to that property. And if it's a local property, you know, a couple state area, um, oftentimes that's me that does that site visit. Okay. It's a great opportunity to, to meet with the owner of the property, spend a couple hours asking some questions. You never know what you might find in a little impromptu question and answer session that may be specific, unique to that property that could be an extra tax savings advantage. So once we've gathered that type of information for the, uh, you know, the estimate and our cost for a project, all the drawings and the site visit, I would probably take during that site visit hundreds of pictures of every little nook and cranny that's in that property. All that information goes to our engineers and analysts in Louisiana. And from that time, it takes probably four to six weeks before they come back with the calculations that go to the tax professional. Not just one person handles that when it goes to Louisiana. There'll, there'll be multiple people that will uh, do that study, check it, counter check it, counterbalance. Um, for a study of a $390,000 property, uh, I mentioned that it's not really, our fees are not based on a percentage of the savings. So I would guess a property that size, it could be anywhere from, 
you know, four to six thousand dollars for us to come in to do the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen them go, you know, four thousand dollars, way upwards of thirty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. But not for the three hundred ninety thousand dollar property. No, no, no. It wouldn't cost thirty thousand dollars. No, no, no. That's right. uh, no, absolutely not. Sure. No, through four, maybe six thousand dollars. But sure. that that expenditure is also an expense too. So in real after tax money, mm -hmm. um, that could be you know a couple like three thousand dollars, maybe. So if we um, if that client's paying three thousand dollars after tax and we save them thirty five thousand dollars in federal taxes that's a what's that eleven to one return on investment yeah so the depreciation of the structure itself is only federal right so yeah. it really doesn't they can be in louisiana because it really doesn't matter what state it's in right so all, all right. The, uh, the the federal laws are the same across the uh, right across the country yeah I've been at this about three years. I come from a medical sales background and was um, fascinated by the concept that you could depreciate things more quickly. It just was mind boggling. Um, I was first introduced to CSSI through networking. So uh, I, I commend you folks for the, you know, the affinity to, to bring people together for networking. And I've enjoyed, you know, the events that I've attended. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're glad you have made it, certainly. Yeah, they're, for sure. They're getting, they're growing. Yeah, you, you're going to outgrow your space. They're getting yeah. bigger, so. Yeah. 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 So you enjoy what you're doing? I do. Yeah. I do. It's, sure. uh, well, it sounds necessary. I mean, I, I have been investing in, uh, in real estate for <clears throat> upwards of you know over over 25 years so sure um and i had no idea that these services were out there or that it was even possible to you know accelerate certain things that that you could could write off sure. so um yeah i think so how can people get a hold of you they can reach me by cell phone um, okay, which is four four one zero nine six zero eight two six nine, and we'd okay. offer a free um, pre analysis of any property. Um, they can also contact me by email if they like. Okay, and why don't you tell in case people are listening by audio and not okay. watching the video, where we will publish the show notes. Sure, uh, all your information in the show notes. So, so why don't you just. Uh, let them know your email address. Email is j l o t z at cost seg e s c o s t s e g e s dot com. Great. And so, for other people, I know, um, you know, this broadcast goes out to a lot more than just people in Maryland. Sure. So, um, can you help in other Good states question. as well? Good question. I am not geographically bound, so. Uh, if I got a call from somebody in Chicago, yeah, we could. I could help do that project for Chicago. I probably wouldn't fly to Chicago to do that site visit. One of our other associates would do that, but sure. I could certainly quarterback that. And I and, guess depending on the size, too. I mean, if it's yeah. big enough, you may. I may. Right. I may. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. I was in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina uh, last year, a... a, a, a client called me about a they they're an optometry practice so they went into a shopping center area the owner of the shopping center gave them some funds for the tenant fin out and they spent about three hundred thousand dollars of their own money to do it well it was they're nice people uh, i love that part of the world i took a trip down to do the site visit and lo and behold they, they called me last week and said we're, we're doing another location let me ask a question uh, that just came to mind. So how does this work for people that are doing uh, maybe leasehold improvements and they don't own the sure. building? Perfect example, that, that uh, optometry practice that I mentioned. So they had some money from the landlord for the shopping center that they had space in, and they were outfitting this space just pristine, pristinely. So they spent 300000 of their own money we came in and studied the three hundred thousand dollar expenditure that they had on that property. So it works for them as well. It works for them as yeah. well. And That's and awesome. if I can say one more thing, the new tax law is extremely friendly. Um, somebody looking to buy a piece of, say, commercial real estate, two million dollar piece of real estate, uh, the down payment on that property is probably going to be at least twenty percent, right? Maybe more. 
depending on the lender, yeah. Sure. What, whether they want it or not yeah. in their portfolio. Sure. Yeah. So the new tax law says that everything that can be reclassified into a five-year, seven, or 15-year depreciation life can be written off at 100% immediately, hmm. which is, is, is significant. So out of that $2 million investment, if they've got to put 20% down, $400,000 down, we may be able to come along as soon as they buy that building and put an extra $200,000 back in their pocket, basically, in tax savings. Yeah. So that makes that property so much more affordable. And you say you do this service. Um, so let's say we have somebody that is considering buying. Um, is there any type of preliminary that won't cost them thousands of dollars to go Absolutely. through the entire thing? Sure. So what, what are the costs that are associated with, you know, say someone's interested in buying that $2 million property. Right. Um, it, is it basically then just your time that, I mean, sure. What, what's the, what's the fee for something like that? If they're they sent, even make the, send the me a real estate listing. Okay. I'll come back with a no charge analysis of mm -hmm. estimated tax savings mm -hmm. and our fee for doing the project. So that won't be a cost to do so for No, so, no. I, all day a long. A lot of times and we see, especially when you get into the higher priced, commercial properties, a lot of times there's a, a due diligence period or a feasibility period sure. uh, of a certain period of time. So they could actually make this study part of their feasibility to determine if there's any savings. Like sure. Yeah. That's great. I mean, you know, all of a sudden we come and find a couple hundred thousand dollars in tax savings. That's money that's available to, to service the loan, buy more property make improvements on the property that they're currently buying. We do, CSSI does probably a hundred of these pre-analysis reports every week. So it's, it's, I love to do it. Love to get calls asking for pre-analysis reports. That's awesome. Well, Jerry, thank you so much, man. This is great information and very valuable. And I know uh, it's, it's going to uh, definitely get some attention with the investors, whether they're considering buying something sure. or they've been investing for 25 years like myself. So thank you so much. Thank you folks for allowing me to the opportunity to be here. I look forward to seeing you at the next event at High Tops. We look forward to it as well. And look forward to helping a lot of the viewers. Thank you. Thank you.